He's the rock star pontiff. <laughs> Thrilling the faithful in St. Peter's Square and across the world. Pope Francis I is the new and revolutionary face of the world's largest religion. Fated by the famous, drawn to his charismatic humility. I had some girls say to me the other day that uh, he's cooler than One Direction. <laughs> yeah, he was the first Pope took a selfie. Uh, <laughs> To get an idea of the extraordinary effect Pope Francis is having on the Catholic world, you only need to come here to his weekly mass in St Peter's Square, where crowds have tripled since he took over. Right now, he is without doubt the most popular pontiff in modern times. What he's done, I think, is uh, made Christians think more deeply about their faith. And lots of them have said, well, thank God for, for Pope Francis. Cardinal Murphy O'Connor has known the Pope since he was simply Jorge Bergoglio, working amidst the crushing poverty of his home country, Argentina. You see, he spent a lot of his time in the slums of Buenos Aires, and so he knows what the plight of poor people is. There are very few popes uh, who've been in a parish, who've worked with the poor. And so he understood them, and he understood their problems and their challenges and their poverty and their lives, and he was one with them. So I think, although he helped them, I think they helped form him too. The former nightclub bouncer turned priest is remembered in the barrios of Buenos Aires as a selfless man who gave hope to the hopeless, like former street kid Pablo Moreno. When you met him, you were a street kid on drugs. How did he help you? Yes, he conveyed great faith to me, a great desire to grow, a great desire to live, to improve every day and to do something for the world, to make it better, to improve it. He shares his light with you, he enlightens you. But this man of enlightenment might have taken a more earthly path had a childhood sweetheart simply said yes. Pope Francis was born and raised in this house with his four younger brothers and sisters. He kicked a soccer ball up and down this street and when he was a teenage boy, he fell in love with the girl right next door at number 521 Membrochet Street. Now, he eventually gave her an ultimatum. Go out with me or I'll join the priesthood. She knocked him back and the rest is history. and what history it would prove to be. When in March last year, the church was stunned by an event that hadn't occurred in 600 years, the resignation of a sitting pontiff. Pope Benedict was seen throughout his reign as the embodiment of a church that would never change. Cardinalis Bergoglio. Cardinal Bergoglio, 76 and ready for retirement, joined his colleagues in Rome to elect Benedict's successor. In the secret and arcane ritual, held 265 times since the dawn of Christendom, the conclave of cardinals in the Sistine Chapel made one of the most surprising choices in the history of the church. I must say my heart leapt for, with great, great joy. And then he came out and said, Buonasera. Buonasera. <laughs> Good evening. This outpouring of euphoria was fueled by the hope that this new pope 
would finally tackle the problems bedeviling the church. The horror of child sex abuse, the role of women and recognition of homosexuals. To be a great pope, even for non-believers, first of all, you have to be a great man. We love the new pope. We love this pope in an absolutely new and enthusiastic way. One of Italy's most colourful and outspoken Pope Watchers is sociologist Franco Ferrarotti. This man comes and he rediscovers instinctively, unexpectedly, the simple teachings of Jesus Christ as they have been enacted and lived to the very end by Francis of Assisi, and he chooses that name. By taking the name Francis for the first time in the church's long history, the Pope sent a message to both believers and the power brokers of the Vatican. In the 13th century, Saint Francis took on the church of his time. Plagued by corruption and greed, it was considered out of touch with the common man. And in an astonishingly short time, he became one of the most beloved figures of the Catholic faith. The parallels between then and now are eerie. So the fact that this man dared to take the name of one of the greatest saints in the history of, uh, of uh, Christendom was very, very significant. A me fa male quando vedo un prete o una suora con la macchina ultimo modello, ma no si può. Pope Francis's insistence on a church without the trappings of power or privilege, tending to the poor, and living a simple life, is appealing to a rising generation of clergy like Brother Stephen Howe from Adelaide, a seminarian with the Legion of Christ in Rome. Has he made you a better person? <laughs> I, I hope so. I mean, he's challenged me to become a better person. He's made me think a little bit more about austerity. I was just noticing the other day, I was watching a photo of the Pope, and his watch is the exact same watch that I have, right? This is Casio, 995, right? <laughs> Before GST here in Rome. And it's just, yeah, plastic piece of junk, basically. But the Pope wears one of these, right? Because he's selfless. He's not looking for any kind of rewards. He doesn't want some big flashy Rolex or whatever. He's just there to serve us. Ci fa vivere in una cultura del fare, dell'utile, dove senza accorgercene scrudiamo Dio dal nostro orizzonte. He's um, certainly upset some people, hasn't he? To conservative critics like Giuliana Ferreira, Pope Francis has dangerously liberal views on everything from the role of women in the church to acceptance of homosexuality. There is a price that you pay for being popular, for being uh, close to the heart of the believers. And if the price is the integrity and, and, and the solid basement of the Christian doctrine, it's too high a price to pay. Take a very, very uh, touchy question, an issue today, role of women in the church or what to do with homosexuals. This, uh, this Pope has a completely different attitude as compared with the immediate predecessors. Homosexuals, fine, respect. Jesus said, do not judge if you don't want to be judged. So who am I to judge an homosexual man if he's a good man? Who am I? That's a marvelous way of putting it, because who am I to judge? The risk is this. The risk is uh, of uh, um, giving to the people of this world, of the secular world, the authorization to be as they like, which is the end of one of the main functions of the Catholic Church. Is Pope Francis a revolutionary? Well, I think I would say he's both a revolutionary and a man of continuity. By that I mean he's revolutionary because suddenly he's become the attraction of the world. 
Did the but church all... need him right now? Yes, yes, I think so. Someone like him, anyway. And, uh, and he's fulfilled expectations beyond all expectation, I think. For centuries, the Catholic Church has been the biggest, most bureaucratic and at times most powerful institution the world has ever seen. An institution that has shown itself capable of great good and unimaginable evil. An institution that is run in secret by men, whose deliberations and decisions, scandals and intrigues occur behind the closed doors of the Vatican. And that secrecy, which has protected those guilty of the church's greatest crime, is what Pope Francis is seeking to end. Just last week, he asked for forgiveness for child sex abuse carried out by priests. The church right now has, a, as always, a hybrid nature. It is a spiritual venture, but also a human, all too human organization. And here in the church are so many fat cats. They are so nicely comfortable. These people feel in danger. Every innovation is bound to create opposition. This thing we know for sure. What form will that opposition take? It will be a subtle, insidious, hidden opposition. Avete capito? Questo è importante. Tutti noi, discepoli e missionari. He's the Pope of many firsts. Many firsts, yeah. And uh, I think a lot of the people who are a bit afraid of the, of the new style are now becoming around to it and understanding that this man is a good man, that he's a, a holy man, and what he is he, doing is for the benefit of the church. But there is still much to be done. If a church that many believe has fallen from grace is to be renewed and redeemed. And whether Pope Francis is the man to do it, only God knows. I think this Pope needs at least 10, 15 years to go, maybe 20, a generation. Then if the Holy Spirit keeps him that long, I think the result will be marvelous. Hello, I'm Alison Langdon. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.